Hi, my name's Gabriella. Welcome to my channel where we talk about and do loads of creative things, including lots of theatre. And I think that's been quite evident recently. It's been on my mind a lot and I wanted to make a video to let you know why. And that's because I got into drama school. Come September, provided universities and things are allowed to reopen, I will be starting a two-year master's in musical theatre at Associated Studios in London. I'm so excited I can't quite believe it. So it's taken me three years of auditioning with 13 auditions in total. I'm going to be 24 when I start the course and 26 or just about to turn 26 when I finish. And I wanted to talk about this. I know my audition advice videos are quite popular so I wanted to do a video where I kind of update those, go through all the things that I've learned over the years auditioning and so I'm going to do another video on that which will be out in the next couple of weeks but for today's video I wanted to talk about how I got to this point like what my journey was. I think a lot of people seem to think with these courses that you'll never get in if you haven't done X, Y, Z. Like I know at my master's auditions there were a lot of people who had done BAs in musical theatre before and I assume that at the BA auditions you'll also find people who have done A levels, B techs, etc in theatre or music or both and there'll also be loads of people who have done school or community theatre for years and it's so hard not to feel like you're already a step behind at the auditions if you haven't done these things. And equally I think there's a lot of people out there who don't know what else you can do if you haven't done these things to prepare. And while I've taken a lot of steps to get to this point, I also have never had a lead in a show. In fact, the biggest singing solo and the only named role I've ever had, I had four lines solo and that was seven years ago back in school when I didn't even know this is what I wanted to do as a career. And there's so many other things that I haven't done that people might consider a given for someone who wants to go into a career in theatre, but then again I've also done a lot of other things. As you've probably heard, everyone has a different route into this industry. What works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for someone else. The aim of this video is just to show you one path to drama school so you can add it to any other stories you've heard and hopefully it will broaden your horizons to all the different options out there. You can learn from my experiences and you can know that even if you haven't done any of the things that other people have been doing to prepare, you might have been doing other equally valuable things or I might be able to give you some ideas for other things that you could be doing. So I'm going to stop waffling and actually get into it. So, where to begin? When I was really young, I definitely did want to act, but I just never thought it was possible. For some reason, I had got into my head that the only people that were allowed to act were people who had been built in the factory called Hollywood. I didn't realise that that was like an actual place. I thought it was like some sort of factory where people were made for film and theatre and things. Towards the end of school I'd sort of twigged onto it a little bit and I did theatre studies for a level but I did set design. I was not assessed in acting at all. I didn't really make any discoveries or progress in acting in any way shape or form during that. At the end of the first year of sixth form we did musical Oliver I was given the role of Mr. Bedwin because of all the roles to split, they decided Mrs. Bedwin was the one. And I did start some singing lessons, but ultimately I did stick with technical theatre because I just felt really trapped in my thing in school. I didn't feel like I could branch out and try anything. I was too scared. And I do really regret that now because <laughs> looking at it now, I could have pursued it outside of school, but that just didn't come across as an option to me right then. It wasn't something I ever thought of or was really aware of properly. I had been thinking about acting a little bit, but as I said, I was beyond scared about doing it. I did actually find a website online. It's not as dodgy as it sounds, but it was basically a fan casting site where people would want to fan cast themselves. So instead of celebrities that people were like, oh, I want this person to be in this adaptation of this book when it's made into a film, I want to do it. And so people would post videos of them doing monologues from the books and then other people would give feedback on how they thought the character was meant to be portrayed. And then every now and again, there would kind of be some voting and 
then that people would be that character, like the winner would get the title of that character until the next voting happened. And it was just such good fun and I was still so scared of it. I remember filming videos for it and like my roommate at school making her like making sure she was wearing headphones she couldn't hear what i was doing she wasn't allowed to look at me while i was doing it. i was so scared but it was really good fun and it was one of the things that probably made me actually seriously think about it a bit more i was just too scared at the time then i left school i took a year out before i went to university and i was an extra in the film the legend of tarzan which was really cool and i also did a musical theater workshop which i absolutely loved but then I went traveling for seven months and uh, didn't really have time for anything else. That was kind of left on a bit of a cliffhanger. So I went to university for a psychology degree. By that point, I knew that I really liked acting and musical theater, but I wasn't sure if I actually wanted to do it for a career and I knew it was a really difficult career to get into. So I wanted a backup plan. I did a little bit of theater society and dance at the beginning, but then I actually ended up joining a sport team and I spent the next three years dedicating most of my time to that sport team. So I only ended up doing singing lessons and the annual musical that my university put on. And that was all and I was only ever in the ensemble in the musical. Not for lack of trying, I just wasn't very good. Like, I could sing in tune, but I never had an acting class, and I just didn't really know what I was doing. I couldn't really do more with my singing than actually just sing in tune. And so going into third year, I knew that musical theatre was my passion and I really wanted to do more of it, and I kind of seriously considered drama school. I had done the odd bit of filming over the past two years but I decided let's give drama school a go just to audition just to see what it's like and hopefully from an audition I'll be able to get a bit of a feel for it and then I'll know whether it's something I want to do. So I started on casual dance classes for that final year. I worked on some songs with my singing teacher and I got a monologue together by myself. I also helped set up an a cappella society during that year, so I got a little bit of extra singing in, but it still was not much. Then April of that year, I auditioned for the Masters in Musical Theatre at GSA. <sighs> I was unprepared. It was actually mildly horrific, but I had a really great time. I absolutely loved it, and it just confirmed to me that's what I want to do. And saying it was awful, I don't think you understand how awful it was. I didn't know how to sing my songs properly. I had a really belty song and instead of just not belting the whole thing, I belted the beginning and then went into head voice for the rest of the song, which was horrific. Thank God it was a fast song and it was over really quick, but that was... I had a completely inappropriate, like, age-wise monologue for myself. Yeah, I still hadn't had a single acting class, so... Yeah, and, and like, the casual dance classes I'd been having, they hadn't done a huge amount for me, not gonna lie. So it was interesting. But because I enjoyed it so much, I ended up auditioning for Mount View and LSMT that year, and even though I obviously didn't get in because I was so unprepared, I learned so much. And it just confirmed to me that was what I wanted to do. And so after that, I moved home from university. I went back to live with my parents and I was really lucky in that they were happy for me. As long as I had a part-time job, they would help me do classes so that I could prepare throughout the year to re-audition for drama school. I was also incredibly lucky in that well, and still am, in that I live very close to GSA and they do a lot of extra classes that anyone can go to if you're not at the drama school. So I took dance classes with them in ballet, jazz, tap and contemporary, all the beginners classes, and I then took group singing and acting and private singing lessons with them as well. And in the term running up to my auditions, I took private acting as well to help with monologue choices. That was my main focus and I didn't really get involved in Amdram anywhere around because it clashed with some of the classes and I now really regret that because I feel that could have also been a really valuable learning experience. But I auditioned as late as possible that year and I was so much better prepared. 
I still found that I was learning a lot from every audition though. I auditioned for GSA, Mount View, Central, and I did a video audition for LSMT. Didn't get in again. However, during that audition season, while I was going for all the auditions, I did a masterclass at the Other Palace with Rebecca Lott. That's really great because what they do is about once a month, they'll run a masterclass with a West End star. It's five pounds for a ticket to go see it and then if you have a ticket to see it you can submit a video and then they will pick usually about four people to work with the West End star on the song and so I was lucky enough to get chosen and I worked with Rebecca Locke on my song which was incredible and I learned so much and she's so lovely as well and completely by chance at that time i also found out about a young performers academy in london sunday classes by industry professionals for 10 to 25 year olds looking to get into the business it's called mx masterclass and i auditioned and got in but it still wasn't drama school so i took a step back and i kind of looked at everything my singing was now at the point where i was vocally strong enough to be getting in my technique was good enough that i could get in However, my audition technique and my acting were maybe the areas I was being let down. So with most of the money that I had saved from working part-time that year, I spent it all on courses over the summer. I did a week-long acting audition technique class with Art Said, which unsurprisingly helped so much with my audition technique. And we also learned a lot about other acting things as well and that really helped me and two weeks later I then spent two more weeks at an acting course at the Actors Centre on a course called Get Into Acting and I learned so much more about acting and how to develop a character, get into scene work and work on a text and how to approach material and work on it myself. I found that invaluable. So, going into the following academic year, I was working part-time, I had Saturday classes at GSA, evening dance classes during the week at GSA, and on Sundays I was in London training at MX Masterclass. This time I went early to auditions. From December to the 1st of February, I auditioned at Mountview, Royal Academy of Music, Central, LSMT, and GSA. As results started coming in and I was getting a lot of rejections. I started doing student films to work on my acting and think about other ways into the industry really. I was completely at a loss. I had moved up dance classes. I was now in the intermediate dance classes instead of the beginners ones. I'm still not a good dancer, but amongst all the other people in masters auditioning, I was about average. I knew my songs, the vocal technique was good enough just from being given feedback by teachers who teach at drama schools and I was a lot more confident with my monologue. I really felt like my acting had significantly improved. Then I had a surprise weekend off and as you do when you don't normally have weekends off and then you suddenly get a surprise one off, I decided to audition for the National Youth Theatre just because. It was great fun but the most valuable thing for me was that they gave me feedback on my monologue there and then. And they said they liked it, but they felt that I was falling into sort of like an obvious acting trap. Went away, fixed that, and then I decided to do some more auditions. I was looking at the Royal Scottish Conservatoire and Associated Studios for Musical Theatre, and then I also thought about Oxford School of Drama and Arts Ed for Masters in Straight Acting, because I figured acting's my weakness, therefore do the Masters in that. Very flawed logic, I know, but that's what I was thinking. I did the Associated Studios audition first because it had been recommended to me and their audition was first out of all of them. Went to the audition, loved it. I got feedback in the room, which is the only time that has ever happened across any of my auditions for drama schools and was incredible. And a few days later, I heard back that they were offering me a place on their two year masters. Because I loved it so much, I halted all my applications for other places and I accepted my place there. And that brings us to now. I am still doing all of my classes, just online versions of them. I'm still practicing and working on my craft as much as I can, doing free online workshops because when you get in, you can't just stop. It's like if you're a runner 
and you're used to running really long distances and then you don't run for a while if you start running again you're not going to be able to run those same long distances just like that you have to work back up to it again and it's the same with singing and acting and dancing if you stop and let it go for a while it takes a while for you to get back into it and you can't really turn up the first day of drama school and be miles behind where you were when they saw you in your audition that's just not going to be great and it's going to make everything much more difficult for you if you get offered a place in January and you don't start your course till September, that's nine months where you're not doing anything. If you're not working on your craft in those nine months, that's a whole lot that you could set yourself back. And that's all I have to say for now. I'm gonna have a video out in a, the next couple of weeks where I talk about all the things that I specifically learnt and I might possibly do a big Q&A with like commonly asked questions about drama school auditions and things a bit after that but for now I hope that's just given you an insight onto other ways that people have gone to get into drama school and that if you haven't done you know qualifications in it before if you haven't done all of your community theatre there's still ways that you can go about getting in and I also made a video called how to work on your acting during lockdown which is basically just loads of things you can be doing in general to keep on top of your craft so if you're looking for more ideas still go check out that video yeah as I said lots more videos coming out soon so make sure you subscribe so you actually see them when they come out and I hope you're doing well and staying safe right now and I will see you very soon okay bye